All right, so I want to introduce you to some new notation. So we've been using the notation f prime of x represents the derivative of f of x, and that's fine, we'll keep using that. We'll sometimes write, write y prime, where y is f of x, and here's the really new notation. We'll write dy over dx. That can also represent the derivative. Sometimes you'll see a d dx of f of x, and that means take the derivative with respect to x of this function. And then every now and then you might even see a df dx. So those are all the ways of writing the same things. Now, this notation was developed due to Leibniz. And I wanted to show you the idea behind the notation. So you remember we talked about uh, if I have, let's think right here, I have this particular x value that I'm interested in. And I can think about this as change in x and this height as change in y. And I, if I take the limit as the change in x goes to 0 of change in y over change in x, we're going to think about m pulling this piece that way. Then I get out exactly the derivative, which is dy dx. And so the idea was these are sort of infinitely tiny, uh, infinitely tiny change in y over infinitely tiny change in x, representing this limiting process that we've written down over there. So a couple of uh, specific cases of the new notation. So before, if I have like f prime of x equals 2x, I could write f prime of two, whoops, of 2, let's say. And then you would know that that's just plug in 2, which is 4. Well, how do you do that with this notation? What does that look like? So I'm going to erase this. Let me get my eraser a little bit bigger. I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to say, uh, we'll just draw an arrow down here. And we'll say f prime of a, evaluating the derivative at x equals a, is the same thing as writing dy dx, and we'll draw a bar evaluated at x equals a. When you see a bar like this after an algebraic expression, that's usually an evaluation bar, and it just means plug this into whatever the previous expression was. All right, and then one more um, specific example. If I write d dx of something like x squared, we already took the derivative. Uh, so you know that this is just 2x. So this notation, d dx, is saying take the derivative of whatever's inside with respect to x. And we proved earlier this is just 2x. All right, so we're going to call a function f differentiable. That's our sort of big word for today, differentiable on an interval i if f prime of a, the derivative of f at a, exists, so that limit exists, there is a tangent line uh, at each point a in the interval i. And so one of the big questions that we want to tackle is how are the notions of continuity and differentiability related. And so let's think about it. So I'm going to write this and then I'm going to erase it. The limit as x goes to a of f of x equals f of a. That's what it means to be continuous at a point. And the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. This is the definition of the derivative. This limit needs to exist. So let's play around for a minute. I want to go ahead and look at a situation where, the, where a function is not continuous. So I'm going to put a, a dot there and an open dot up there. And we can sort of imagine something like, something like this, maybe. And now, if you think about it, it's clear this function f is not continuous at x equals a. There's a jump. But I want you to think with me about the tangent lines, what's going on with them. And so as we get closer, let's let the, um, I'm sorry, the, the secant lines as we get closer and closer to A. So I'm going to pick A as the point that I'm interested in. What's, is there a tangent line there? So I'm going to pick another point here and form a secant line. I can do that. Then I'm going to get closer. I can do that and closer. And as I let those secant lines, as I'm pulling the uh, X values closer, and closer and closer, the secant lines are getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And eventually, they're heading towards a vertical line, which has infinite slope or undefined slope. 
And so this this example, at least, this is only an example, but this example suggests that if you're not continuous at A, let's go ahead and say, uh, and F prime of A does not exist, seems to suggest if you're not continuous at A, then the derivative doesn't exist. And now I want you to think back to discrete, those of you that have had discrete, not Q implies not P is the equivalent to P implies Q. So think with me. Not continuous implies no derivative. So not continuous, no derivative is the same thing as saying derivative implies continuous. And so that leads us to our theorem. Uh, remember, a theorem is just a math fact. If f is differentiable at a, all that means is that the there's a tangent line. f has a tangent line at this point. The limit that we talked about, the limit defining this slope of the tangent line exists. Uh, if f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous at a. And so I thought we'd actually prove this really quickly. Shouldn't take us too long. So proof. So since f is differentiable at x equals a, what does that even mean? That means that f prime of a, which by the way is the limit, we're going to write it the other way, limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a, this limit exists. It actually goes to a specific value. And so we want to show the function is continuous at a. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and say we need to show the limit as x goes to a of f of x is in fact f of a. All right, but now let's think very carefully about this. I'm going to pull this over, and I'm going to consider the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a. And I want you to realize that if this limit equals 0, then I can just pull the f of a back over, and I've got this limit. So this limit is the same thing as showing that this limit equals 0. f of x goes to f of a if and only if f of x minus f of a goes to 0. And so now I'm going to say, well, that's all fine and dandy. I can write this, though, as the limit as x goes to a of x minus a times f of x minus f of a all over x minus a, right? I want to bring this into the game somehow. All I have is the top. And so I just put what I want downstairs, but then I've got to fix by multiplying upstairs by the same thing. And then we say, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's this limit law that says if both of these limits, if both pieces of the product, if the limit as x goes to a of this piece exists, and the limit as x goes to a of this piece exists, then you can compute them separately. And so this limit we know is going to be, well, plug in a into this side and you get 0, and plug in a into this side and you get out f prime of a, and of course this limit is just 0, and so we're done. And so I actually need to squeeze a little bit more room in here. I'm going to just slide this down. I'll fix it later uh, after we end the video. And let me slide this down a little bit more. So sorry. All right, let's zoom back in. So now we can say, uh, thus, the limit as x goes to a of f of, e of f of x is indeed f of a. So f is continuous at x equals a, and we've proven that, so we can end the proof. All right, 